Coming up next on Good Morning El Paso. I strongly believe that the best way for America to support our values is through engagement. A new day in the relationship between the U.S. and Cuba this morning. Embassies opening up today. We have the very latest. After last week's attack on military facilities in Tennessee, Governor Greg Abbott is taking increased precaution here in Texas. And police are looking for clues this morning to how one man's body ended up in an East El Paso canal. We'll have the details. Where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Today, Cuban officials will formally inaugurate their embassy in Washington. The Cuban flag will fly for the first time since Havana and the U.S. severed ties back in 1961. We'll get to the latest details on our top story in just a bit. But first, a very good morning to El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Let's get right to Crystal Clay and talk about the forecast for today and the work week ahead. Good morning. Good morning. It's a very nice forecast. Typical of July, we are talking still warm conditions, but also the possibility of some afternoon storms. Let's begin with your clouds and radar map. No storms for us this morning to track. Just some clouds out there that are coming in from the south and we are looking at a good amount of sunshine that will be building in as our sun rises this morning as well. Very nice pleasant start to our Monday morning as you head off to work. 78 your temperature in El Paso right now. Winds are at 6 miles per hour for Las Cruces. We're at 66 degrees and our relative humidity is at 71% so there's certainly moisture available to us as we move forward. Now coming up we're looking at the possibility of showers and breezy conditions today with a similar forecast tomorrow but as we start to see things shift up a bit triple digits potentially in the forecast we're going to talk about how high into the triple digits we may go that's coming up if we must all right thanks crystal to the headlines now for the first time in more than a half century the united states and cuba now have full diplomatic relations the embassies in both countries will be open again today after an agreement to resume normal ties took effect at midnight abc's bazi kanani has the very latest on this story developing right now the cuban flag raised inside the u.s state department this morning and soon will fly outside the caribbean islands embassy in washington dc for the first time in a half century over in Cuba, workers have been sprucing up the building that today is once again an American embassy. La primera fase del Cuban President Raul Castro says this day is the beginning of a long and complex road to normalizing relations between the two countries that severed ties back in 1961, shortly after a young Fidel Castro seized power, declaring Cuba a socialist state. More than 50 years later, President Obama decided it's time for a new approach. And I've been clear that we will also continue to have some very serious differences. However, I strongly believe that the best way for America to support our values is through engagement. Among the differences still clearly present, freedom of speech and assembly. Just yesterday, Cuban security forces once again arrested political protesters. Critics, including several Republican presidential candidates, say Cuba has not yet done enough to earn a new relationship with the United States and threaten a change of course. I would end the diplomatic relations with an anti-American communist tyranny until such time as they actually held a democratic opening in Cuba. Secretary of State John Kerry will meet with his Cuban counterpart at the State Department later today and will travel to Cuba next month for a formal ceremony at the U.S. Embassy there. Bazi Kanani, ABC News, Washington. U.S. investigators are still trying to understand why Mohammed Yusuf Abulaziz opened fire at an Army Recruiting Center and Navy Operations Center in Tennessee last Thursday. The city of Chattanooga is trying to comprehend these events as well. Sunday church services became memorials for the five victims of last week's deadly shooting. Impromptu memorials have sprung up across the city as residents try to process the events of the past few days. A vigil was held Sunday evening as an opportunity for all Islamic centers of Greater Nashville to come together and pray for the victims of the Chattanooga shooting and their families. In the end, we're also brothers and sisters in humanity. The center wanted to show solidarity for the city to condemn the heinous act and to spread the word that they're part of a larger community. The goal of the group is to stand strong, not only for their own religious community, but for Chattanooga as everyone works to recover.
Meanwhile, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is authorizing guardsmen at military facilities across Texas to be armed. This comes after the attack on that recruiting center and a Marine Navy Reserve facility in Chattanooga earlier this week. Abbott said, quote, after the recent shooting in Chattanooga, it has become clear that our military personnel must have the ability to defend themselves against these types of attacks on our own soil, end quote. Arming the National Guard at these bases will not only serve as a deterrent to anyone wishing to do harm to our servicemen and women, but will enable them to protect those living and working on the base. However, it is too early to tell now if the facilities should have guards or other increased protection. Authorities are trying to figure out how a body ended up in a canal far east of the county. Sheriff's deputies say it was found on the 9900 block of Socorro Road. Deputies say they were flagged down just before 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Investigators still do not know how the man died and have not released his identity. And from our New Mexico mobile newsroom now, a Las Cruces family says their daughter has been missing for more than a month now. 44-year-old Janet Castrejon vanished while on a camping trip with her family in June. The family was camping at Rustler Peak in southern Arizona and fears their daughter may have been abducted. Now, she suffered a devastating brain injury when she was 17 years old. The day of the disappearance, Janet was in the campground restroom with her mother. She took a short walk alone back to her family's campsite and never made it back. If anyone sees anything that looks suspicious, they're asking you to call 911. The city of El Paso says mistakes are to blame for funding that led to the loss of federal money to fast-track transportation projects. It was the topic of last night's ABC7 Extra. We have Good Morning El Paso's Denise Olivas who joins us live with a recap now. Good morning. A city rep representative, Claudia Ordaz, last week pointed out that the city had lost $40 million worth of projects because of what appears to be inefficiencies. But other city employees, other city officials, I should say, say that that money is not lost. City manager Tommy Gonzalez admitted city employees had made mistakes when filling out applications. But he says the bigger problem is city employees are so afraid of city council, they submit projects for funding that aren't ready out of fear that they will be attacked publicly by city council. Council members. One of our guests last night, Matthew McElroy, the city director of International Bridges, who is also a part of a new committee to help the city approve its process to get federal funding. He says the term lost is being misused. What really happened with regard to how transportation funding works is we lost the opportunity to accelerate funding. The money didn't disappear. If you watched what happened at the MPO recently, there were still $50 million in transportation money that got spent on this region. Those projects will help this region. And the Texas Department of Transportation is also saying that the city could lose on more than $20 million in reimbursements for transportation projects because the city is not regularly sending invoices to the state. The city says that the real amount is less than half of what TxDOT claims and it admits that it could be doing a better job about it. Well, coming up in our next half hour, we hear from City Rep Claudia Ordaz on that possible culture of fear within City Hall. For now, we're live in downtown El Paso. Denise Olivas, ABC7. All right, Denise, thank you. And it is 6.08, and we're taking a look at our tech stock traffic cameras over on the far west side. I-10 and Artcraft, where you can see some cars off in the distance, but no problems to tell you about this time as people are heading to work this morning. Nationally aired boxing was in El Paso over the weekend. And ABC7 has exclusive photos from the match to show you coming up. And later, torrential downpours have residents searching for higher ground. We'll take a look where. And meteorologist Crystal Clyde standing by. Crystal. And that forecast still includes the chance of rain, but what about this weekend? Did you see anything cool out your window? I've got an awesome photo to show you right after the break. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.